Bam. Ein. Wo. Ba. Ja. Da. Du بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إخواني وأخواتي أحييكم بتحية الإسلام فأقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Almighty God the most gracious the most merciful All praises are due to Almighty God Lord and cherisher of this and sustainer of all the worlds and may his peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, peace be upon him. The seal of all prophets and the best of examples to Allah's creation. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, viewers, with the universal greeting of peace. And that is, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, which means, may the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you. I want to thank you. Ashkurukum ala mutala'atikum. I want to thank you for viewing this program and this is a weekly program that is uh, normally um, viewed and aired on the tin television station and I'm coming to you live every Wednesday at this particular time from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock I have this program which is called Durusun Fil Lughatil Arabiya Lessons in Arabic I'm your host uh, Sheikh Mohammed Munaf Mohammed and today, inshallah, I want to do a quick um, recap and review of some of uh, the lessons that I did on this program. Today is the 20th um, session. And uh, my plan is for today, inshallah, I'm going to do a recap from lesson 1 to lesson 10 or lesson 9. And then, inshallah, the next week, next week, I will be doing a continuation of the review and revision from lesson 10 or 11 to where we stopped. And after that, inshallah, <coughs> we plan to have a different approach of um, teaching the Arabic language, um, different from the point of view and the sense that we are planning to have a live class here at the station so we will have <coughs> a live participation of students and uh, inshallah we will also have um, the lines open for you if you would like to call in and ask any of the questions inshallah um, that will also be welcomed all right so we start off with this revision and I want to start from where we started at the very beginning talking about the importance of the Arabic language. The Arabic language, as my beloved brothers and sisters, is perhaps uh, the greatest of all languages and the most expressive of all languages that is known to man. And it is the language of the glorious Quran, the noble Quran, the last revealed book of Almighty God to all of mankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, Allah, He said, <coughs> Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'aqilun. Verily, we have sent down this Qur'an as an Arabic Qur'an so that you may understand. And this is taken from chapter 12 of the glorious Qur'an and it is verse number 2. <coughs> the Arabic language, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a language that is spoken by about 24 nations of the world and places like Saudi Arabia that is the place where I have learned Arabic language but you have places like Iraq and you have um, Egypt you have Yemen Jordan the United Arab Emirates and lots of other nations um, a total of about 24 nations and the Arabic language is their official um, language and the Arabic language also um, spoken in other countries um, even though it is not the official um, language but many of the 
the citizens of those countries, they speak um, Arabic, uh, places like, um, like Tanzania and also Ghana. And you have a lot of people from Turkey and even from Iran. Um, and, and India and Pakistan, lots of people, they speak um, the Arabic language. Um, the Arabic language, um, about 350 million people um, for these 24 nations, as I said, about 355 uh, million people, their official language is the Arabic language. <coughs> and the Arabic language is rated as number four in world languages. Some censors have mentioned it is number six. Uh, number one is um, Mandarin or Chinese, which is spoken by about 1.2 billion people of the world. And the second is Spanish, third is English, and fourth is the Arabic language. It is one also one of the languages of the United Nations. <coughs> and so the Arabic language is a language uh, that is, is a popular language, and it also has had a lot of influence on other languages of uh, the world. Um, English language is not um, strange also to the Arabic language. Um, you have many words in the English language. Uh, one scholar had mentioned about 1,000, at least 1,000 words um, in the English language are originally um, Arabic. Words like um, sugar, with the Arabic word for sugar is sukkar, alcohol, or al kohul or al kohul um, cotton, al cotton, um, coffin, al kafan, and many other words in the English language. Um, admiral, tamarin. Tamarin is a combi uh, is a combined noun or word. It is from tamr and hind. All right, it's a compound word. All right, so tamr is one word which means dates, and hind means India. So it is the Indian dates, which is um, tamarin. Tamarin, all right, and tamar, of course, means dates, as you have learned. So it had a lot of influence in um, other languages. English, um, Spanish, for example, you have la camisa, factura, and arroz, uh, all of these words. Uh, arroz means rice, camisa means um, shirt, a shirt. Um, in Arabic, is qamis. Uh, factura, which factura in Arabic, factura means a bill, and so on. All right, so the Arabic language has influenced other languages, and um, even the, the French, and um, Hausa, and Swahili, and Malay, M Malaysian language. All of these um, languages have lots of their vocabulary from the Arabic language. Even the word um, banana, <coughs> as I have explained some time before in one of the previous sessions, banana, the fruit banana is called banana because it resembles um, our fingers, and uh, the word banana is mentioned in the Quran in chapter 75. Allah says, "Bala qadirina ala an nusawiya banana." All right, that um, on the day of judgment, Almighty God, who has created all of us, He is going to bring us back even to our fingertips. All right, and people have realized that the word banana, fingertips, have been emphasized here, also even to discover that every person's fingertip is different, all right? So the Muslims had, had given, been given that information a very a long time ago. And also there are places, brothers and sisters, places also influenced by the Arabic language. You have places like um, Hawaii. Hawaii is an Arabic word from the word um, Hawa, and Hawa means breeze. Hawaii is an adjective, it means breezy. Hawaii, and perhaps the place Hawaii that we already know, Hawaii, is a breezy place. Um, Honolulu is a distortion of the word Honolulu, and Honolulu or Honolulu means here are pearls. Here are pearls. All right, so that place I understand is also famous for pearls. You have the place like um, Portugal, which is a distortion of the word Portugal, and it means citrus, and that country. It's famous for the citrus um, uh, fruits. Madagascar, which is al madal asgar, the shortest span. All right. So even places have you know Arabic names. 
So the Arabic language has influenced other languages and also places and so on. And it is a really wonderful and beautiful language and hence the reason Almighty God, Allah, he has revealed the Quran into the, uh, in the Arabic language, as he has mentioned in chapter 12, uh, verse 2. Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian la'allakum ta'qilun. Verily, we have revealed this Quran in the Arabic language so that you may understand it. And he also asked the question, he says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدُعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are in doubt as to what we have revealed on our servant Muhammad, then, you know, you can bring all your help and so on and produce something like it. Produce something like the Quran. This is a, a challenge that Almighty God has put forward to all of mankind. So even the people who are Arabs and who are not Muslims, that challenge is even open for them. Your language is Arabic. Produce something like it. And of course, since that revelation over 1400 years ago, until today, and until the Day of Judgment, no one will be able to produce a book like the glorious Quran. So the Arabic language, my beloved brothers and sisters, is indeed a wonderful, and we talked a lot about the importance of the language, and especially for a Muslim person. A Muslim person should try to understand because many of the terms, the terminologies that we use as, uh, in Islam, you know, they're Arabic terminologies, and we need to understand. And also when we pray five times a day, a Muslim um, ought to pray five times a day, and our prayer comprises and consists of um, quotations from the glorious Quran. And so when you learn the Arabic language, it helps you, you know, to understand what you're saying. And it, so it will help you to even concentrate better in uh, your prayer. All right. So these are just some reflections on the importance of uh, the Arabic language. And then after that, um, we went into the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. And I had mentioned that the Arabic alphabet has 28 letters. And uh, Arabic is written from right to left. There are no um, P and there are no V in the Arabic um, language. And so these two letters, they are substituted by other letters of the Arabic, uh, of the English um, alphabet. So for the letter P, it is substituted by the letter B. And for the letter V, it is substituted with the letter um, F. All right? And that is how it is, all right? And so whenever you have, um, the Arabs have to write words that um, have the letter um, P, like, uh, for example, Pakistan, they will not say uh, Pakistan, but say Pakistan, Pakistan, all right? And things like that. So I mentioned the letters of the alphabet, 28 letters, and we said that the Arabic is read from right to um, left. And then I also went on to talk about the letters, all of the letters of the alphabet, and or trying to explain how every letter is uh, pronounced, right? the, where it originates from and how we should pronounce it, because it is important for you to know when you're speaking the Arabic language how the letters are pronounced, because if you pronounce a word wrong, then you will give a different connotation and, uh, you know, the person you're speaking to then will have the wrong impression. You want to say something, but you're saying something else. All right? So, for example, if a man tells uh, his wife, uh, for example, I'm just saying an example. All right? Or a man tells a woman, you see, uh, Auntie um, Kelby, you know. He wants to say, you are like, my, you are my heart. But he didn't say anti Kalbi, he said anti Kalbi. What he's saying is, you are my dog. So he wants to say, you are my heart, but you know, he says, you are my dog. So you have to differentiate between the letters, they say, kof and calf, to, ta, and all of these things. All right, so the, the pronunciation is very, very important. Uh, what, one of the beautiful things of the Arabic language is that it is. Uh, perhaps uh, one of the most organized um, language of the world. And inshallah, when we come back from the break, I will um, explain and demonstrate to you how uh, the Arabic language and show how the Arabic language is, you know, so organized. All right. So we'll take a short break, inshallah. When we come back, I will give you a little short demonstration of how organized 
the Arabic language is and how easy and simple. It's easy to follow and inshallah you would love it. <laughs> We know that when we die, where will we go? Our bodies, the Muslims believe, our bodies will not just become rotted and we will go into thin air and nothing will happen to us. We as Muslims believe that we will go in a world of barzakh. It is like a waiting place, the world of the grave. And there can be torment of the grave or there can be peace and tranquility, sleeping comfortably until Yawm Al Qiyamah, SubhanAllah, seeing the windows, a window that shows us the Jannah, inshaAllah, Ameen. O ye who believe, eat of the good things wherewith we have provided you, and render thanks to Allah, if it is indeed He whom ye worship. Was ready to make a stand on my own two feet while my world was crumbling down and you tried your best to shelter me from the coming of the storm you opened my eyes to see that all hope was not gone Allahu Allahu ya Rabbi ya Allah Allahu ya Rabbi ya Allah When we can do qurbani right and we can get our family involved in the qurbani and and we could come together with them it's a great thing because that's a, that's a, a moment of um, of a, a unique moment for all of us when we involve in doing this thing for the pleasure of Allah the three main bodies of the Jews, right? Um, there's the Orthodox Jews, the Reformed Jews, and the Conservative Jews. And they all have different opinions about what could be allowed as kosher and so on. For example, the Reformed Jews, they allow the skin of the pig to be kosher. So you'll find some gelatin, kosher gelatin, made from pig skin. And that's why kosher gelatin, we don't allow it even in things like Yopla yogurt. So sometimes people have wealth, you know, in the bank, in a fixed deposit. And you know, together with that money in the bank, their own money, let's call it the capital, the amount they put in, there would have been a lot of interest on that. Now, zakat cannot be paid on that interest because if you do that, you will be paying zakat on haram wealth. Oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. The Sharia states that the Muslim is one who submits his total will to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Kullu nafsin maud. Every soul shall have a taste of death. That is a reality. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a nutshell, as a prerequisite even for those words that we would say, the kalima, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever learns knowledge in order to boast and brag and to debate and argue with those who don't have knowledge and to, to show their knowledge to those who do, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they can kindle their place in the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa say to the mu'mineen, say to the muslimin that if you make a claim that you love Allah rabbul izzah, then follow my footsteps, subhanAllah. Follow the way of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa Welcome back to Darul Tarbiyah, the Islamic Network News Review. On our details, Mark Bowden, outgoing United Nations Humanitarian Coordinator for Somalia, has called for increased international aid to the Horn of Africa nation. 
Fes kalimat taibala ilaha ilallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Prophet Ibrahim as a young boy was brought up in an environment of idols and idol worship. Even his own father used to make and worship idols. I understand your distress, but their soldiers did not give us any chance. They made a... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Marhaban. Welcome, brothers and sisters, as we continue with Durusun fi Logat al Arabiya, lessons in the Arabic language. And it is conducted at the Tin Television Station. And I was just a while ago talking about how beautiful and how organized the Arabic language is. And I just wanted to uh, demonstrate what I mean by how organized the Arabic language is and how easy it is to learn. Take, for example, we have this word. That is the letter Ta, of course, and this is an Alif, all right? Remember Alif, I have, I have mentioned some time before, uh, it is the first letter of the alphabet, and it has no sound of its own. All it does is to lengthen the Fatha sound, so you go Ah. So the letter is Ta, the Alif attached, you get Ta, R, R, Tar. Tar means to fly, to fly, okay? I'm going to do a transliteration here for the viewers who cannot read Arabic. So we have tar. And then, <coughs> all words that are associated with flying, they are formed from this root word. Okay? So if we were to attach a prefix <coughs> to this letter, to this word, we have this. <coughs> this says matar. So we have ma, and then we have tor. Matar means an airport. All right? Because I wrote this in red, I will also write this in red so that you can see the difference. So matar. What you would notice as we are writing here is that <coughs> The root word, which is tor, is maintained in the derivative. So we, have, we, have, we still have this maintained here, but we have a prefix. Okay, so matar. Matar means an airport, and it is a place where flying happens. You know, the, the plane take, takes off from there. So you have matar. And then you have, and the Arabic words are actually formed either by prefix or infix, and also suffix. Now we want to get a bird, right, because the bird flies. So what do we have <coughs> is we have an infix in this word. So we have another letter here. So we have ta'ir. Okay. So now let me write ta. And then we have <coughs> ir, ta ir. But notice the T A A and the R is still maintained. The shape for those of you, you know, can read Arabic. You can see the letter ta alif and the ra. And um, those of you who even can't read Arabic, at least you can still see a drawing. They look all alike. All right. So it is pronounced differently. So the derivatives are really um, <coughs> with the root and, a little, and some variations, either by a prefix or an infix or even a suffix. Okay? So <coughs> a bird, and we could have a bigger bird, a plane. All right? A plane. And then what we do is we take that small bird, all right, and then <coughs> that is this, the same bird like this, ta'ir, and we add another letter here, and this word now becomes ta'ira. 
and ta'ira. Let me transliterate it. Ta. <coughs> I. Ra. It means a plane. <coughs> and then you could have the word. Tayyar. <clears throat> okay. And Tayyar means a pilot. And you have other derivatives, right? But I don't want to spend too much of time. You have like the word um, from <coughs> tayyar. You can also have tayyara. Tayyara also is synonymous to ta'ira. And they both mean plane. And then you can also have the word tayaran. Tayaran means aviation. Now what I want for us to observe here, brothers and sisters, <coughs> is that ta, alif, and ra, three letters here, we have and they are maintained in all of the words you can see. These are called derivatives. These are the words that are formed from the root word, which is the verb. Now, observe the difference now from the Arabic to the English. Look at the word fly. Can you see any of the letters maintained in this word here, airport? Bird, plane, pilot. They are all different words. All, all different. But the Arabic now, anything that has to do with flying is built from the verb. That is the root word. And that is what makes the Arabic language beautiful, easy to interpret. All right? Even if you, you, know, you may not know, let's say you didn't know one of these words here, at least you will have a slight idea of, of some kind of meaning of the word, something to do with flying because of your knowledge of the root, all right? It has to do something with flying. So at least you know a little bit of it, all right? And all we have, so basically <coughs> the, the key to the Arabic language is knowing the root and knowing how the derivatives are formed and the different shades of meaning that we can get when we put certain prefixes or infixes or suffixes, all right? The infix and the prefix and suffix can change. And different letters when uh, prefix to the verb give you, give you certain shades of meaning. For example, if you want to get the active participle, you have a certain way to do it. If you want to get the passive um, participle, you, there is a something, there is a way how to do it. If you want to get the, the active voice or the passive voice and so on, uh, you, you know, you, there are different ways of realizing all of these words if you learn the rules of the Arabic grammar. All right. So this is just a simple de demonstration of showing us how beautiful and how simple the Arabic language is. So <coughs> I had also mentioned that <coughs> the Arabic alphabet, all of the letters of the Arabic alphabet, they, are, they could be um, looked at as the carriages of a train. They can all be attached from either side, the right side or the left side, both sides, with the exception of six letters. There are six letters in the Arabic alphabet that do not allow attachment from both sides, only from one side. And they are Aleph, Wow, Dal, Val, Ra, and za. All right? These are six letters. I wrote them like this to actually make a little um, chart here, a box, to, for us to remember them very easily. Like in a glance, you could, the first letter of the alphabet and coming down to the end of the alphabet. And these four, they come in sequence of the alphabet. 
Now these um, six letters, <coughs> they do not um, join to letters that they meet. Okay? So if Arabic is written from, from right to left, all right, we have to understand that if we want to join um, the letters, let's say we want to join um, the letter Dal, and we want to join an Aleph to it, and we want to join um, a Ra, all right? None of them could be attached, so it will be written like this. Da. The Dal would not be attached to the Aleph, okay? So they do not join to letters that they meet. The Aleph would not join to the Ra. They do not join to letters that they meet, all right? However, if <coughs> there are letters um, before them, any one of them, any one of these six letters, if you have... Um, any letters before them, then the letters will be attached to them. So, if you have an example for you, have a, you have a ba coming uh, before the dal, then we just attach the ba right here, like that. Okay. So these letters I have mentioned in uh, in uh, the previous program that they are just like people, you know, they want others to reach out to them but they would not reach out to others. Like, like some people, right? They want people to come to you, but you wouldn't make the move um, to reach out to them, all right? You know, sometimes you hear people saying that, you know, this person, they don't talk to me, or I don't know what happened to them, you know? But maybe the person might be saying the same thing about you. Why it is that, you know, this person is not talking to them? So maybe you are waiting for the person to come to you, and the person is waiting for you to go to them. All right? It's, you know, so you should be the one who should make the move. Don't wait for the person. Make the move and go and <coughs> meet out to the person. So coming back to the point um, that I was trying to establish here is that all of the letters of the alphabet, the Arabic language, all of the letters of the Arabic alphabet, they can be attached from both sides with the exception of these six. These six, they only allow attachment from the right side not the left side, okay? Letters coming before, yes, could be attached, but not afterwards. Now, before the dal is the ba, all right? After the dal, the alif was not attached. So if we are talking about the alif, why it is that the dal didn't attach here? It is because the dal is one of the six letters, all right? So it is easy to remember the six letters. And <coughs> I remember also and when we were talking about all of the letters of the alphabet, I did give examples from the Quran, you know, trying to also, you know, help to build our vocabulary with words from the Quran. And we mentioned uh, quite a number of words for every letter of the alphabet. I give, I remember giving examples like the word Alif, um, Allah, you remember the word Allah, Ba for Bismillah, Ta for Tamr, uh, which means um, dates. Uh, and th tha for thawab or thamarat. Thawab means blessing. Thamarat means fruits. Jim for jamal means a camel. Ha for halal or haram. Kha for khinzir or khamr. And we say khinzir which means um, the pig or swine <coughs> or pork. And khamr means alcohol. Both items, they are haram. Right? But the jamal, jim for jamal, that is halal. Right? Means uh, permissible. And haram means uh, prohibited. And then you have dal for dunya or deen, religion. Dal for dhikr, remembrance. Uh, one of the other names of the Quran, dhikr. Ra for the word rab. I mentioned also that the word rab um, has been mentioned in the Quran about 975 times. And so on. So every letter of the alphabet, I did um, mention some word coming from the Quran so that, you know, you could also build your vocabulary from the Quran. So, inshallah, if you, you know, you have missed any of these um, programs or lessons, then it is easy for you to get these programs. Um, you can either contact the Tin Television Station or you can also go on the internet, on YouTube, and you just um, type in Arabic lessons or you could type in my name, Sheikh Munaf Mohammed. And hopefully you will, you know, you can see all of the lessons from lesson one up to, <coughs> I think, up to lesson 
17 or 18, I don't know up to how far they have finished putting on the internet. But um, we're, so far we have done, I have done um, 19 sessions. Today is the 20th session. So you can go back to have more details of what I'm talking about today. We're just doing a little revision and I'm just giving, you know, some quick points of some of the things that I um, had covered in those lessons. So after, you know, mentioning the, the letters of the alphabet, I also had mentioned that um, the letters, of course, they have different shapes and uh, you have to learn um, the letters in their isolated form. If the, the letter is written at the beginning of a word, how it is written, if it is in the middle of a word, how it is written and how it, it is in the end of a word. <coughs> All right. And um, I also remember that um, some people, when they're teaching others, you know, to write the, the Arabic and how to join the letters, sometimes it become very challenging for the student to remember all of these different shapes. And um, it is easy to, to point out and to, for us to know that in reality, all of these shapes that we will see, uh, they are not really so far, far away from the way how you would learn the letters in the isolated form. So, for example, if we take, for example, the letter Ba, you have the letter Ba. That is in the isolated form, I for isolated. Okay, if it is in the beginning of a word, then we cut it in half and we write it like this, Ba, right? If it is in the middle of a word, all right, it is the same thing like this, the beginning, but because it is in the middle, it means that there is a letter before. So this here is an attachment line, okay? So this part here is an attachment, it's a part of the previous letter. But this shape here now, it looks different from this. And this is what confuses a lot of people because this shape is different from this. But in reality, it is the same thing. It is the same, identical, all right? This is only the, the previous letter that is part of that. And likewise, at the end of it, it looks like this, all right? So when you, at a quick glance, you're looking at four different shapes. But when you look closer to these different shapes, what you would come to realize is that this one is the same as this. There is only an attachment line here. And this one is the same as this. So basically, there are only two shapes. All right? And this is only half of this. So there is nothing difficult about this thing. And as long as you can, you know, find out and see uh, those little points that I'm giving you, then you will find it very easy. All right? Arabic is very, it's a very easy language um, to, to read, at, at least to read. All right? Uh, we are doing not only reading, but we want to read, write, speak, listen. All right? Just like any other language is um, looking at the four different skills of the language. All right, um, I would also like to point out by, to my viewers, brothers and sisters, that um, the Arabic language is perhaps um, the most um, read language in the world. And the reason for that is because um, the Quran, of course, it's, it's in, in Arabic. And even though there are uh, millions of people who, whose language is not Arabic, yet they can read Arabic. All right, like for example, right here in Trinidad and Tobago, we have um, thousands of Muslims, all right? Um, they can't um, speak Arabic like the Arabs. They can't speak Arabic, but if you give them a Quran, which of course is in Arabic, they can read it and read it correctly for you, all right? So I'm saying that the Arabic language um, is perhaps the most read. Um, the, the Quran actually is the most read book. The Quran is the most read book in the world, right? And um, as a matter of fact, um, uh, the non-Arabs constitute um, the majority of Muslims in the world. The, the Arab world is only about 20% of the Muslims, right? The other 80%, they are um, non-Arabic um, speaking people, right? And that is, you know, just showing us clearly that many Muslims, you know, they can read Arabic language. So, the letters about learning the different um, forms of the letter, don't let this, you know, pose a problem to you. 
All right, uh, don't look at it as something difficult. How am I going to learn for every letter I have to learn for there are four different shapes? No, as long as you look at it, one shape, this one is half of it. This is the same as this one, just a little addition. And this one is the same as this, just a little addition. And so too with the other letters, the sisters of Ba, Ta, and Tha, they are just like this, the same. And Jim, Ha, and Kha, three other sisters, they also have the same thing, all right? So we look at the different shapes of the letters. Um, you're not going to go through all of that. As I have said, you can always go back to the, um, the program, the previous programs, inshallah, you will be able to, um, to follow up that. And after the, less, the, the letters of the alphabet, I went on straight to the vowels, all right? And um, the vowels, we'll talk about the vowels in a short while because I think we need to take a break now. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about the vowels and we'll talk about some of the other things that we did with regards to the reading of the language. All right, so stay close and we'll be back in a short while. هذا القرآن يوحدنا لطريق الخير يوجهنا الله تعالى أنزله ورسول الله معلمنا We know that when we die, where will we go? Our bodies, the Muslims believe our bodies will not just become rotted and we will go into thin air and nothing will happen to us. We as Muslims believe that we will go in a world of barzakh. It is like a waiting place, the world of the grave. And there can be torment of the grave or there can be peace and tranquility, sleeping comfortably until Yawm al Qiyamah. Subhanallah, seeing the windows, a window that shows us the Jannah, inshallah. Ameen. <laughs> Father and our mother as people are the absolute supreme most important people in our lives more important to us in our living lives because if the Prophet ﷺ was alive then he would have been more important but outside and past his death it is our parents that take that position you know that respect is gained when you can say one word and everyone knows who that person is and that's the obvious of course that's the aim of all public relations companies they get paid millions and millions to be able to create that brand name so you just say that person's name and it's recognized and understood well you know subhanallah we have the same thing we have the same thing they said abdullah is ibn mas'ud radiallahu anhu no need to tell us anymore <laughs> Do you know what Islam is? All the different masails which are recorded, you know, in the, in the books of fiqh, deduced from the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, performing salat on a mount, you know, or performing salat in a boat or a ship, you know, every single thing mentions that you must start turning towards the qibla. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Marhaban. Welcome brothers and sisters. We're continuing with lessons in Arabic and uh, now we are talking about the vowels. The vowels, we spoke about this previously and we are just doing a re review and a recap of what we had done many uh, months ago and today's, um, today's session is just a uh, revision of what we had done before because we believe that you know, we should have some revision because there is no point that we continue moving, moving and climbing and then you're forgetting all of the, the simple things, all right? And many of the brothers and sisters may have missed uh, many of the programs. And I have mentioned before that if you have missed any of the programs, you can go on YouTube and you can find them, inshallah. You can call the station and they will be happy to give you the information of how you can get. <coughs> the vowels, first of all, we have to understand that the vowels, when we talk about vowels, there are two kinds of vowels, all right? You have short and long, the short vowel and the long vowel. The short vowels, they are signs. 
All right, so we, the way how we understand vowels in the our English language is that uh, they are just letters, A, E, I, O, U. All right, in the Arabic language, the first thing that you need to know about vowels is that they are two kinds. First, two kinds, short and long. The short one, they are signs. The long ones, they are letters. Okay, letters. These signs, they are written either above or below uh, the letter, and there are three of them. All right, so one of the sign, I write it in, um, in red, so you will know what is the sign. It's like this, or like this, and like this. And I will draw a line to indicate whether it is above. The first one is above the letter, the next one is below the letter, and the last one is above the letter. Each one has a name. This one is called Fatha. Fat ha. This one is called Kasra. And this one is called all right, Dhamma. All right. Now the Fatha gives us now what we are accustomed to, A, it sounds like a A. And the Kasra sounds like E or I. And this one sounds like O or U. So we have A, E, I, O, U. All right, we have the five uh, vowels. All right, these are the signs. <coughs> above, below, above. All right, so if you have a letter of the alphabet, all right, let's suppose you have the letter Ba, okay, and you have a fat hub of it. That gives you the sound of Ba, Ba. And if you have the Kesra sign, it gives you the sound of B. And if you have the Dhamma sign, it gives you the sound of Bu. So Ba, B, Bu. They're short vowels, so therefore when you see the vowel, you pronounce it in a short manner, all right? Stuccato, short, all right? But if it is a long vowel now, <coughs> we said the long vowels, they are letters, all right? And these three letters, all right? So the letters are three also. And these letters are actually <coughs> elongating the short ones. So the alif elongates the a ah sound. This one is elongated by the ya. Yeah. And the last one is elongated by wow. And the way how we remember these three letters, we say Aleph is the first letter of the alphabet. The ya yeah is the last letter of the alphabet. So first and last. And then we say, wow. So easy it is. Wow. All right. So <clears throat> look at it. Aleph lengthens the ah, the ya ah lengthens this one, and the wow lengthens this. Okay? So, if we have ba fatha gives me the sound of ba, and I want to get the sound of ba, I take the short vowel, that is the letter ba, all right? And the fatha there, ba, and then I add the alif to it like this and it becomes ba okay ba so this one is called ba pronounced as ba this one is short ba 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 and this is ba okay actually there is a word in arabic language ba and then you have the letter ba ba b ba B. Bab means a door. All right? Door. All right. Supposing you want to get B, we change the vowel. So we change this vowel here. Okay? So we have B. So we get B. And if you want to get B, we change this. Aleph. All right? And the fatha, 
and we just add on the ya. All right? So we get B. So that's B. And this one is B. And likewise, if we have bu, we add the wow, we get bu. All right? Like that. Bu. So we have short vowels and long vowels. And after that, we have some other simple signs of a reading. All right? So these are the vowels. The vowels, the long vowels, and the short vowels. And we have, <coughs> when, there, when there is no vowel, all right, no vowel on the letter, then you have a sign that is called sukun. Sukun. So supposing we have, for example, alif, sin, ha, and ba. All right? So alif kesra is e. Sin has nothing, so we indicate that word as sukun. So you say is, ha, b, hab. All right? So in the, sukun nearly indicates that the letter is vowel less, no vowel. And it also means that the letter must be pronounced in conjunction with the previous one. So alif kesra is e, joined to the sin, give you is. Ha, fatha is ha, joined to the ba. Hab. So sukun indicates that the letter has no vowel and at the same time it must be pronounced in conjunction with the previous one. Is hab. Alright? Is hab. So that is the sukun. And after the sukun you have the next sign which is called shadda. <coughs> and the shadda, alright? Shadda is a tiny w that is written above a word. Alright? For example, you have the letter ta, kof, ba, and lam. Ta, kof, ba, lam. All right? Ta, fatha is ta. Kof, fatha, and the ba with the shadda. The shadda indicates that the letter is twice. So the kof has to be joined to the ba. You get, it gives you kob. And then you have to call the ba another time because the ba is twice. When the letter is written twice, the Arabs write it once and they put a sign that is called shadda indicating that the letter is twice. So it is ta qab and then ba joined to the lamb bal. Ta qabbal means accept. Ta qabbal. Accept. That is the shadda. All right, and we talk a lot about shadda. Go back to the previous lesson, inshallah, on the internet and you will be able to understand or oh, I took my time and I explained in all details inshallah and hopefully you will understand we want to spend the remaining eight minutes to just also recap some at least some um, questions and answers in the Arabic language greetings and so on introduction so you meet someone <clears throat> you meet someone what do you say ahlan wa sahlan all right if of course um, after you greet them and you say assalamu alaikum all right, peace be on to you. It's ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan means uh, welcome. And um, the Arabs have different ways of um, expressing that greeting of welcome. Sometimes they will just say marhaban or marhab or marhaba. So it's marhaban or marhaba. All right, uh, a lot of people when they're singing um, praises to the Prophet and so on, they say marhaban, marhaban, ya Rasulallah. And many of the people, of course, they say these things and they don't know what they're saying, you know. They say, welcome, welcome, O Prophet. Um, nowadays, even sometimes people, they sing this um, prayer, welcome, welcome, O Prophet, you know, thinking that the Prophet, you know, is somewhere around and they're welcoming him. All right, and this is, of course, is a wrong concept and a wrong way of thinking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As a matter of fact, that is committing a great sin by welcoming um, the prophet, and you know, he is not there. All right? The Quran tells us clearly he has died. You know, inna kama yatun wa inna huma yatun. You die, and all the others will also die. All right? So the word marhaban means welcome. <coughs> so the Arab will say ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban, or he may just say ahlan, the first word, or he may say marhaban, 
or marhab or marhaba, all of these, correct. They would not use the middle one, which is sahlan. They never will say sahlan. All right? So it's either the first one or the last one or all of them together. But the, the middle one is not isolated. You could isolate the first one and the last one. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban. Ahlan alone or marhaban. All right? Like this. And then you have distortion of these um, greetings um, in broken Arabic. You see, ahlain, ahlain wa sahlain. You know, ahlain means ahlan. It's a distortion. Uh, or they might say, hala, hala. Again, you know, welcome. All right? So the uh, different countries, they have different ways of expressing the same word, but then their own um, slang, as I would say. So ahlan wa sahlan means welcome. All right? Um, if you want to ask a person how, what is your name? You say, Masmuk. Masmuk. What's your name? Masmuk. All right? Masmuk. When you, of course, you would sound it like a question, you say, Masmuk. It's me, Muhammad. My name is Muhammad. Masmuk. It's me, Muhammad. Masmuk. What's your name? My name is Muhammad. What's yours? It's me, Muhammad. Masmuk. All right? Ana min Trinidad. Ana min Trinidad. I am from Trinidad. All right? Min aina ant? Where are you from? Min aina ant? Min aina ant? I don't like to use the, um, or to write the transliteration. All right? Because we're doing Arabic and then you have to get the code. So it's a min. Remember we just revised this. Mim kestra is mi. This noon has nothing, so it's min. I na. So it's the same letter noon. This one is joined together with this because it is, doesn't have a vowel. The two of them pronounced together. So you say min. The ya has no vowel. All right? Ya has two dots. The only letter of the alphabet that has two dots below. Ai, ai, and then nun fatana. Min aina ant. All right? Question. Arab, Arabic language has no um, punctuation marks. It is understood from the way how it is written, and they normally don't have that. But sometimes you put it in so that the the student, you know, get accustomed to know it's a question. Min aina ant? Where are you from? Ana min Canada. Ana min America. Ana min Turkiya. Ana min Saudiya. Ana min Suriya. Ana min Pakistan. Ana min al Hind, and so on. All right. Ana min. I am from. Ana min Karoni. Ana min Port of Spain. Ana min. Ana means I. Min from. Ana min. Easy to remember. Ana min. Min aina ant. Where are you from? Min aina ant. Where are you from? And then you could ask, you know, other questions. So we're giving you the, the simple ones, you know, uh, to get accustomed to the first one. Um, ahlan wa sahlan. Then you say, min aina ant. Ana min. So and so. And then you could move on to other questions like, ma hatha? What is this? Ma hatha? What is this? Ma hatha qalam. This is a pen. Have the column. Right, this is a pen. A person may ask you um, who you are by instead of asking masmuk, you say, man ant, who are you? Man means who, and ant, you. Man ant, who are you? And you could say, Anna, whatever, you want to say your name. Or if you don't want to say your name, then you can give your profession. You know, Anna al mudarris, I am the teacher. Anna mudarris. Ana mudarris fi, and I am a teacher at so and so place. Or ana muhandis, I'm an engineer. Or ana tabib, I'm a doctor. So, what we need to do is to build our vocabulary, but we learn how to construct the simple sentences. So, ana means I, min means from. Ana min. Ana min, I am from. Or if you don't want to say min, you just say, I am who you are. If a person asks you, where are you from? Min aina ant, then you say, ana min. If you want to say, now I am a Trinidadian, you say, ana Trinidadi. Ana Trinidadi. So we have to understand the point I was making earlier on, 
is that we have to understand the, the prefix, the infix, and the suffix. In this case, if you want to attribute yourself to a place, then you have to know the ending, which is the suffix. It ends with a e, e. So Trinidad is the name of the country, and the attributive or this, the nationality, right? Trinidadian, right? So Trinidadi. In the case of a masculine, a male person, you see Trinidadi. If you're a female, you say Ana Trinidadia. Ana Trinidadia. All right? Ana Missouri. I am an Egyptian. Ana Missouri. Or Ana Missouriya. So for female, you go Iya. Yeah. All right? So Turkey. Turkey. All right? Ana Turkey. Ana Turkiya. Ana Suri. Ana Suriya. All right? Ana Kanadi, Ana Kanadia, Ana Amriki, Ana Amrikiya. All right? So, E for male, Iya for female, and so on. All right? Ana Gayani, Ana Gayaniya, female, and so on. So, the attributive. So, I hope, inshallah, that um, this revision would have been of benefit to, to you, inshallah. And what we need to do is to do some more practice, inshallah. Practice with each other, inshallah, and you will get it. Next week, inshallah, as I have mentioned in the earlier on in my program today, we will have another revision of uh, where I have left off today, continuing with the revision until where we have stopped. And after that, for the following week, hopefully, inshallah, we're going to have a live class here. And if you want to come, I will surely um, appreciate that if you come to join the class here. And um, hopefully we will have it um, better and more interesting because we'll have, instead of me speaking just to the camera, all right, if we have a live class here, then it will be even um, better. All right, so I want to thank you very much. Ashkurukum kafiran ala mutala'atikum, mushahideen al-kiram, ila al-usbu al-qadim, my beloved uh, viewers, until next week, inshallah. Shukran, wassalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi, wa barakatuh.